I, we are here and we are ready to go. Amanda just gave me my drink and uh, we are ready to go. I hope everybody is ready. I apologize. Um, I apologize for uh, having to do this this late, but I appreciate the understanding who uh, are wanting to watch live. Uh, I appreciate you being willing to be a little flexible <laughs> and uh, we just wait a little later in the evening. So instead of good afternoon, good evening, One Hope family. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, <clears throat> as always, we are excited about uh, what is happening in uh, in our One Hope family and we're, we're looking forward to continuously trying to do life with you guys the best that we can. So uh, for starters, as always, we always are asking if you could be willing to message us anytime if you have any prayer requests or if you just want to talk about some praise reports, some things that God is doing in your life. We are always down for that <laughs> as well. Um, so we're, we're always asking for you guys to communicate with us, contact us. Uh, feel free if you're here live uh, to go ahead and type some stuff in the chat. If you if you need some prayer for something, feel free to to let let us know through the chat as we're watching the sermon and as you're watching the sermon and and we can go from there as well. And so that people who are watching can also pray for you as well, uh, and not just us. Okay, uh, I understand if it's something private and you would rather just communicate with us, that's fine. But we are more than happy to pray with you and pray for you uh, however we can. So, um, as always, uh, my name is Pastor Dwayne, and uh, my wife Amanda and I are always uh, happy to be with you guys each and every week. We're going to go ahead and get started with a prayer and get into this word. I don't want to take up too much time because uh, I, I want to make sure I have time to, to go through all this and, and do it clearly. So uh, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we just love you. We thank you for all that you are and all that you do in our lives. We, we ask you, Lord, to just allow your word to, to, to come alive in each and every one of our lives as we hear this word that you have given me. We ask you, Lord, to allow this word to be given to them as you have prepared it for me. We love you, Lord, with everything within us, and we, we uh, say all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start this thing, and I'm going to start off with the title. <laughs> uh, I haven't started off with the title in a long time, but I'm going to start off with the title. It's called Ready or Not, Ready or Not, and not only am I going to start off with the title, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the scripture as well also. <laughs> we're going to get into this thing, and uh, we're just going to dive right in it, all right? <clears throat> so. Uh, just a little context of what we're going to be reading. Uh, we're going to be reading in Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 25, uh, verses 1 through 12. So if you want to turn there while I'm giving you a little context, that would be great. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 12. Uh, this is just Jesus. He's talking about the returning of the bridegroom. And uh, he is talking about different parables that uh, relate to the returning of the bridegroom. And I chose one of the parables that I felt like uh, gave the best description of what he was trying to depict in his parables. And so we're going to go ahead and start reading that. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 12 <clears throat> says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be, like, shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels and with their lamps. So before we go any further, we need to understand. So the foolish ones just had a lamp that was full, and then the wise ones, they took the vessel that they had or whatever type of thing that they had to hold their oil, they filled that up on top of the oil that was filled up in their lamps. So essentially they had, they were carrying as much oil as they possibly could. Okay. So uh, the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, figures, always late. Somebody's always got to be late. Can't nobody be on time for nothing. It's just... <laughs> So while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. 
And at midnight, a cry was heard, behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, no, least there should not be enough for us and you, but you go, but ra go rather to those who sell and buy yourselves, buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. All right. So here is the parable of the 10 virgins. And so this is essentially what we're talking about is being ready for the return of the bridegroom, being ready for Christ's return. That's really what this is all about. And so uh, essentially the bridegroom is going to return and when he returns he's going to come back for his bride the bride is his church so we as the church need to be ready for the coming of the bridegroom and so i find a lot of people struggle with being ready i find a lot of people struggle with being ready when you start talking about these type of uh, questions about being ready a lot of people struggle with those things excuse me and take a drink all right a lot of people struggle with being ready. You see, it's, it's almost like it's a stressful time for these people, like for people, like for trying to be ready. People get so stressed out with this whole thought, this whole idea of trying to be ready because they think that being ready means they got to be perfect uh, almost because they're always like, well, I'm not ready. Uh, I, I, I'm always messing up. I'm always making mistakes. I'm not ready. I'm not where I need to be yet. I'm not ready. And I'm, I don't know how to get there yet. And, 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 and it's so stressful because people are struggling with the thought of, I have to be perfect just to be ready. And that's not the case. Perfection has nothing to do with being ready. Being ready is simply just being ready. Whether we messed up an hour ago or messed up a day ago, we, we, we have the opportunity because Christ died on the cross to ask for forgiveness and be ready, right? <laughs> so, so it's not about being perfect, and, but yet so many people are struggling with this. Matter of fact, you have people, you have one set of people who, who are like, they're struggling with this because they think it, you have to be perfect and they're, they're stressing out about that. And then you have the other pe uh, set of people who are, so too lax about it and they don't take it serious enough. And so you, we, we have to find a happy medium in between. And that's the difficult part. Well, that's why we're here today. We're going to talk about trying to find what the scripture says about that happy medium. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So you see, I don't think that the problem is about knowing that we need to be ready. Every Christian knows that we need to be ready. I think the problem is, is knowing what being ready looks like. I think that's the problem. I think that we struggle with understanding what being ready really looks like. Because it's not being perfect and it's not being super lax, but there's something in the middle there that the scriptures talk about. And we need to understand what it really looks like. Because one hope, we're, we're a church about, about actually physically taking the action and, 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 and understanding how to take the word and apply it to our lives. And if we don't know what it looks like to be ready, how can we be ready? We can't. So this is what we're here for, <laughs> to get a visual and understanding of what it really means to be ready. And I'm going to give you a perfect example of, of this situation about what I feel like people just don't know what it looks like. For example, my kids, I got two girls, my kids, they are a prime example. I can tell them, both of them, I'll be like, look, we got 10 minutes. I need you to be ready in 10 minutes. And they're like, okay, dad, got it. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Some of the times they'll even set an alarm. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. I say, okay, be ready in 10 minutes. We need to be ready to go walk out the door in 10 minutes. No questions asked. Got it, got it, dad. We're gonna be ready. And then all of a sudden the timer goes off, ding, ding, and it's 10 minutes. All right, let's go, let's go. And then all of a sudden one kid says, all right, I'm ready. I just gotta go put on my shoes. 
The other kid says, oh, I'm ready. I just got to go and use the bathroom. But you're not ready. <laughs> if you still have something to do, you're not ready. And this seems to be the, the, the thing. But here's the catch, folks. In their eyes, they were ready. In their eyes, they were like, oh, I'm ready to go. I just have to do this, and I'm ready. And it's just going to take just a couple more minutes, but I needed to leave in 10 minutes, not 12 minutes or 13 minutes. And so now we're running two to three minutes behind because they thought they were ready, but they really weren't. They really weren't ready. And so it's one thing to, to be ready and just to do whatever you're doing you know, while you're waiting. That's great. But when you're done, when it's time to go and we need to go and 10 minutes is up, regardless of what you're doing, if you can stop what you're doing and walk out the door, that's ready. But when you say, oh, okay, I'm ready, but I just have to go. Oh, I'm ready, but I just have to go do, or I'm ready, I just got to find my headphones. And we know, I'm telling you, nobody ever knows where the headphones are at, no. ever. So that's another five minutes, another five minutes. We don't lost five minutes because they thought they were ready, the exception of the headphones. So, so as funny as it is, it is the truth. It's the truth. And I believe that we do the same thing as Christians. I, I believe that we, we think that we are ready, but we're really not. We, 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 we are mixing up what ready really looks like. And so here are the 10 virgins, as we read before in the scriptures. They thought that they all came ready to, for the return of the bride. Room. They all thought it. Matter of fact, when they got there, if you could, if you would have asked any one of those virgins at any point in time of when they first got there, if they were ready, they all would have said, absolutely, 100%, I'm ready. I'll put my paycheck on it. I'm ready. That's how they believed. They truly believed they were ready. No questions. But as we see through the scriptures, only five of them were truly ready. The other five weren't. And so here is the, the concept of what I think ready looks like and what ready actually is. That's the problem. So <clears throat> you see, the scriptures had talked about it and it said five virgins had oil in their vessels and in their lamps. Okay, so they had all the oil, like we said before, they had all the oil that they could possibly hold. They had their vessel and their lamps full, full to the brim, good to go. All right. And so they, they, they were carrying all they could. The other five virgins only had what was in their lamps. And I'm going to tell you, folks, I, I've read this story a lot. And I just didn't take the time to, to, to think about this deep enough. But there's, there's, there's some stuff here. Um, they only had, had what was in their lamps. So they thought they were ready. But they were only ready based on a window of time that they thought the bridegroom was coming. Why do I say that? Because let's think about it. These lamps from full to empty only go so long, constantly running. I can guarantee you if I ask any person out in this world today, I said, hey, how long does your, your cell phone last? At any given time, they can give me an approximate time of how long that cell phone lasts before they have to charge it. Absolutely. Because why? They use it all the time. So these ladies, they have a lamp that's full of oil. They use it all the time. They had to use it every day. It wasn't like they just had electricity all over the place. That's not how that worked, right? So they had to use these lamps all the time. So they knew how much time this lamp was going to last. <laughs> they knew that this lamp from start to finish, had this many hours, this many hours, no matter how you played it, constant running this many, many hours. And they had to keep it running because they didn't want to miss the bridegroom when he came. So that means that they were constantly running this, these lamps. So they believe that the bridegroom would return within a certain amount of hours. That's what they believe. They believe the, the bridegroom would return within a certain window of time because that's all they had with the lamp. But we all know that the Bible says that no one knows the time nor day where the bridegroom is going to return. He said he's going to come like a thief in the night. It said that, that we're just going to be chilling and one person is going to be taken up into heaven. The other person is going to be still there on earth. 
We have no idea. We could be sleeping in the bed or at work doing our job or shopping at the grocery store. We have no idea. But see, these virgins, they only gave themselves a specific window of time as if that this is guaranteed that he's got to come during this time. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say that. This is why, folks, we have to constantly be ready because we just don't know. We have no idea. So what I want to do is I want to talk about how we need to be ready. And I want us to be able to get somewhat of a visual of what that really looks like. Okay. First thing, we need to make sure our hearts are ready. What does that mean? So the first things that probably come to your mind when we say we need to make sure our hearts are ready is, well, you know, have I accepted Christ in my life? Am I asking for forgiveness when I mess up? Um, am I following God's will for my life the best that I can? These are the things that you think about when you say, is my heart ready? And that is true. That is true. These are vital things. But I want to go a little bit further with this because these are, these are the basic things. This is what I consider core stuff, basic stuff. You, you don't have any type of relationship with Christ without these things, okay? So we, we know these things. This is the, the, the bread and butter of being a, a follower of Christ, okay? We all know that. But I want to go a little further than that, all right? So because I think that we're missing some things that uh, are very vital as well um, to, to us being ready, especially with our hearts. <clears throat> and so, uh, and, uh, and we're going to go and look at Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verses 14. Excuse me. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden. It's simply saying we are the light that shines on this world. Or, and let's just take this a little further, we are the lamps that shine on this world, just like the ten virgins. We are the lamp. We are the lamp. And as we wait for the bridegroom, whenever he chooses to return, we must be able to keep our lamp lit. It says, a, house, a city on the, uh, that is set on the hill cannot be hidden. In other words, that when we are uh, a light that is, being, that is shining, we cannot be hidden. We cannot hide our light. We cannot uh, cover it up or we can't allow it to go out. It has to shine. It has to shine. And so how do we keep our lamps lit? Because the only five of the virgins understood the, what they needed to do to keep their lamps lit. The other five just didn't catch it until it was too late. So how do we keep our lamps lit? How do we stay lit and, and stay a being in light for this world? How do we do that? Because the reality is, is that as much as we are a light for this world, we still need to be a light to see when the bridegroom comes as well. We still need to be a light to show the world who this bridegroom is, right? So these are things that are part of being ready. A lot of people are thinking um, are thinking that it's all about me. I need to be ready. But what about the things you need to do to be ready as well? Like, what about uh, showing the world who Christ really is? Isn't that a part of being ready? Isn't that a part of our job of being ready for when Christ returns so that we can have as many people for the, for the church, many people that, is, uh, that is, has become the bride for the bridegroom, is that, isn't that part of what we should be doing? That's part of being ready. And so how do we keep our lamps lit? So we know that it's not being perfect. We talked about that. It's not about being perfect. It's not about not making mistakes. That's why Christ had died on the cross. So we didn't have to worry about that. So we know it's not that. But we're going to read another scripture and, 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 and see what, how we can do this. How are we able to keep our lamps lit? So we go to John, John chapter 8, verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. It says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The light of life. So let me get this straight. So, so Jesus, uh, it says that Jesus is saying, 
I am the light of the world. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Before we read, it said that Jesus said that we are the light of the world. That's kind of confusing. Hmm. So if Jesus says that we are the light of the world, and then he also says that he is the light of the world, how is that possible? Well, if we look back at the verse 12 uh, on, on John 8, it says, he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So what he's really saying is that if you follow me, you can have the same light that I have because I am dwelling inside of you. So here it is. He's saying he who is connected to me is a he who follows me. But what this is really going to is going deeper than just follow. He who is connected to me, he who abides in me and I in him, he whose temple I do, my spirit dwells in, that, that person will have the light of life. That person will always have a lamp that is lit. That is the type of person he is he's talking about. Uh, we got to understand because the, if, if we're going to keep our lamp lit, we have to be connected to the one that has the unlimited source, the one that never burns out. That is Jesus Christ. That is him. He is our unlimited source. You can actually look at it and say, Jesus Christ the, our Lord and Savior, he, he is our oil that never runs out. He's the oil that keeps the light burning. Because as long as his light is burning and it never burns out, our light will never burn out as well. It is amazing how this works. <clears throat> you see, the, the virgins, the five, the five foolish virgins, they only brought what was in their lamps. You see, if I'm going to be ready, I have to always have not just me, but I have to have the, the spirit of Christ in me at all times. I have to be connected to the spirit of Christ that is in me in a way that allows me to, to be able to have that same light that he has inside of me. <clears throat> so, like I said before, it's important like we talked about, to accept Christ in our lives, to follow Christ, to ask for forgiveness when we mess up, all of these things. These are very important things. But it's not just about following Christ by reading his word and doing what it says. You know, we anybody can read a book and, and try their best to do what it says to do. But it's not just about reading the word and trying to do the best you can do. We need to follow Christ in a way that allows us to be connected to his spirit we need to follow Christ in a way that allows the Holy Spirit to come alive in our lives. Now, I need you to understand this. There's a difference. There's a difference between uh, the Holy Spirit that is alive and is inside of us and the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. Okay, because the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us is active. The Holy Spirit that lives and so lives is an action word. It, it, it's something that he is doing. The Holy Spirit that lives inside of you is, is walking with you, is guiding you, is talking with you, and you are talking with him. The Holy Spirit that, that, that is that's living inside of you, you are able to, to know when you're, uh, you're talking to, to the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit is talking to you, you're able to recognize his voice because you're connected to him in a way that you are one. You're connected to him in a way that is way deeper than just I follow Christ. Way different than just saying, I accepted Christ in my life and I'm a follower of Christ. No, it is an action thing. We need to put his spirit into action and actually be working in, in, a, in, a, in a as a team effort with, his, with the Holy Spirit so that we are constantly moving with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I move when the Holy Spirit moves. I speak when the Holy Spirit speaks. I listen when the Holy Spirit tells me to listen. I am following the Holy Spirit in a way that allows me to be one with him. This is how we keep our lights lit. This is how we're going to be ready for the bridegroom. <clears throat> All right. See, when we truly are connected to the Holy Spirit, we're able to utilize everything it has, he has to offer. Everything the Holy Spirit has to offer, we're able to utilize it. It is amazing how the Holy Spirit is underutilized and, and underappreciated because 
we, we talk about how the, the Holy Spirit is inside of us, but we don't really do much with it. How often are you talking with the Holy Spirit? How often are you hearing the Holy Spirit and following mm -hmm. what the Holy Spirit is saying? If you want to be ready at all times, the Holy Spirit is going to keep you there. But you have to be able to be connected to him in a way that allows your heart to be ready. That's the only way it's going to happen. We have to go deeper than just following Christ. We got to go deeper than just accepting him as our Lord and Savior. If we want to be ready, we have to go deeper than that. All right, the next thing I want to talk about when it comes to being ready is we need to be mentally ready. We need to be mentally ready. And let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter um, chapter 1, verse 13. <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. It says, so prepare your minds for action. First thing. Right off the bat, prepare your minds for action. Be completely sober in spirit, steadfast, self-disciplined, spiritually and morally alert. Fix your hope completely on the grace of God that is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Is revealed. The very first thing that is said in here, and I don't think it was an accident, I believe that this is on purpose, is the very first thing that was said is to prepare your minds for action. Prepare your minds for action. Why? Because if your mind isn't right, everything else is going to not function the way it needs to. Our mind is the driving, the, 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 the engine, the driving engine that says, do these things. It tells our body to do what it does without our mind being clear, without our mind being focused and alert and ready to go, prepared for action. We have nothing, folks. We have nothing. And so I believe that, that it was not a, an accident for your mind so to prepare your mind to be the first thing. It says prepare your mind for action. Here's the next thing. It says action. It didn't say prepare your mind for this, prepare your mind for that. It just says, prepare your mind for action. It doesn't specify. Why? Because we need to prepare, prepare our minds for all action, for everything that may come against us, for everything that may come our way. We have no idea what's going to happen. Just like those 10 virgins, they had no idea that the, the bridegroom would be delayed. Who would have known? Hey, they, they, have a, they, they had a pretty good idea how long it was going to take for the bridegroom to get here, but they didn't have no idea that there was going to be an anomaly that stopped the bridegroom from getting on there on time. They had no clue. So we, we can't just be prepared for specific things. We need to be mentally prepared for every action that we can possibly prepare ourselves for. Mentally. <clears throat> so no matter what comes our way, we're going to be ready. No matter what distractions may come our way, we must be focused. It's our minds that stay prepared. It's our minds that stay ready. And everything else, if we, if we make sure those things are ready, everything else will have a fighting chance. Everything else will have a fighting chance if our minds are ready. So let's continue on. It says, after it says, prepare your minds for action, it says, be completely sober in spirit. So what does that mean? It's not talking about alcohol. It's talking about being alert in your spirit. It's talking about making sure you know what is going in your spirit and so that you know what's coming out of your spirit. It's talking about making sure that you are alert and making sure that you are controlling what is going in and out, the traffic that's coming in and out. It's, 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 it's making sure that you have uh, the the right things in in your life, the right people in your life, the the right uh, uh, doors opened in your life, so that you can be spiritually ready, so that you don't have to worry about the spirit of fear coming in, creeping in on you, because you're watching, you're prepared, you're waiting and seeing. Oh, I don't want that. That's not that's not good. I'm I'm already feeling the spirit of fear coming upon me, but that's not what the Bible says. I got to be spiritually sober. I mean, I got to be paying attention and I got to make sure that I kick anything that is not of God out of my spirit immediately. Immediately. Next thing it says is steadfast and self-discipline. I'm going to tell you right now, we got to stay stay pushing uh, forward every day and we have to learn how to stay dis self-disciplined. Sometimes I'm going to tell you, this is the one of the hardest things for people to do is be self-disciplined. We tend to, to come up with every excuse why we can't do something. Don't know why, but we just do it. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and it, 
it hinders our self-discipline. It hinders us from being able to stay focused on the task at hand because uh, when and whenever something doesn't look right or something doesn't feel right, we tend to freeze up and say, well, I guess I'll have to try this next year or try this another time because this is not going to work. Or maybe this is not what God wanted me to do. Yes, it was what God wanted you to do, but you are lacking self-discipline to keep pushing when things don't seem right. You know, sometimes in your life, you're going to have a clear path, a road that says, go this way. And sometimes you're going to be finding yourself in the woods and, and, and have no path at all. So to be self-disciplined, we got to be able to get to the point. Remember what I said? We got to be connected to the spirit, Holy Spirit, in a way that we're one. So we got to get to the point where we, when we're on the road and it has a clear path, great. But when we fall out, find ourselves in the woods somewhere because in dark and, and, it's, and it's no direction at all and no, no, no straight path, we need to be able to say, I still got this because you know why? Because I got the guide inside of me that's going to tell me exactly where I got to go. Self-discipline, stick with it, and I can still do the job. I may not be able to do it on my own, but I'm not here to do it on my own. I have the spirit inside of me that is meant to be used for times like this. I need to be self-disciplined to keep pushing forward even when it's not easy because I can, if, if I'm one with the Holy Spirit and my heart is right and ready, then that means that when the Holy Spirit speaks, I'll recognize his voice and I'll know what direction to go in. I don't need a road that tells me or a sign that tells me to go left or go right or go straight. I can I can listen and I, my, my, my Holy Spirit inside of me, the Holy Spirit inside of me will tell me where I need to go. We need to be self-disciplined to the point where we're not worried about things going exactly as planned. We have backup plans. We have plans for plans on top of plans because you know why because the person who made the plans knows everything he knows everything and here's the crazy part we we this is the thing that frustrates me and i i am a culprit of this just like anybody else i talked about backup plans but we need to stop allowing the holy spirit to be our backup plan and that should be plan a the Holy Spirit should be plan A. Even when the road is clear path, we should still be listening to the Holy Spirit. And plan B, well, there shouldn't be a plan B because the Holy Spirit has it under control. And we need to trust that. But we always tend to make the Holy Spirit plan B instead of plan A. We trust ourselves and we think we're plan A. And when plan A fails, and most of the time it does, then we try to go to plan B. And that's when we're all lost and confused because we don't know what to do. We don't know how to hear the Holy Spirit talking anymore because we haven't practiced. We haven't been doing it. We haven't spoken to the Holy Spirit in whenever, however long. And so we don't even know how that, what that looks like. And we were at church today and, and uh, uh, the pastor was talking about praying. He was like, I don't learn how to pray by reading a book. He says, I learn how to pray by praying. You're not going to learn how to speak to the Holy Spirit and hear the Holy Spirit by reading the book. You're going to learn by speaking to the Holy Spirit and listening for his voice and then see testing it out and seeing what happens because that's how you learn and that's how you begin to recognize when it's the Holy Spirit and when it's not. And so if we go on, and I, I got to keep moving, I, I want to keep the time sh time within the time frame here. Um uh, it says spiritually and morally alert, same thing, same thing. We need to make sure we know what's coming in so we know what's going out. So we need to morally be alert, spiritually be alert, making sure that we are, we're getting into God's word. So we're, we're feeding ourselves the right food and not the wrong food. Right. And so we need to be alert on those things and how, what we do. Uh, we need to be alert on who's speaking into our lives. We need to be alert about that too. That's something that we, we look over sometimes. Sometimes we have some people in our lives that are not allowing us to, to, to be spiritually ready or morally ready because we're allowing the wrong people to speak into our lives. Just because you know somebody doesn't mean they have the right to be able to speak into your lives. They might be able to speak to you, but they can't speak into you. And so there's a difference understand that and be alert and be able to control what they who is speaking into you and who is speaking to you there's there's a big difference and and i'm not getting into that but that that is a big difference so understand that um and then it says fix your hope completely on the grace of god that is coming to you when jesus christ is revealed you see our hope is in christ 
Our hope is not in the outcome of a situation. Our hope is not in um, the clarity of, uh, of the direction that we need to go. Our hope is in Christ. So if we're going to be able to stay on the right path, we need to stay focused on Christ. We're not, we, need, we can't be focused on whether or not something turns out right or wrong. We can't be focused on whether or not things happen at the time frame that we think they're going to happen because that's exactly what the, the, the five virgins did. We need to just put our hope in Christ and focus on him. And we focus on him, we can focus on the hope and we can get through anything. All right, last thing, last thing, and we're going to wrap this up. I promise, <laughs> I promise. We must live our lives ready. We must live our lives ready. What does that mean? For example, if, if Amanda tells me she's on the phone and she says, I'm on my way home, we need to get to this appointment. And she says, be ready uh, to go when I get there. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to have my shoes on, my, my keys, everything's ready. I'm dressed and ready to go, and I'm ready to go. So when I see her pull up in that driveway, I'm ready to go. I'm going to do whatever I'm doing, but I'm going to be ready while I'm doing it. You understand what I'm saying? So I may be waiting for her to get there, but I'm going to be ready. I might be just kind of chilling and around the house, but I'm going to be ready. So when I when it's time for me to go, I can walk right out the door and nothing stops me from doing that. All right, let's look at Luke. Luke chapter 12, verses 35 to 36. <clears throat> it says, let your waist be girded and your lamps burning and yourselves be like men who wait for their master when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately, meaning they're ready to go. So the first thing that I noticed is that, so we need to be living our lives ready to go at any time. We need to be living our lives ready to go at any time. Like I said before, I might be uh, waiting on Amanda, but while waiting on Amanda, I'm going to be ready to go. I might even I might even turn on the TV just sitting there chilling. But when Amanda pulls up and beeps that horn, I'm going to hit that button and I'm going to walk out the door. I'm just going to walk out. There's nothing left to do. I'm ready to go. OK, I'm still living. I'm still doing life, but I am ready while I'm doing life. All right. And so here it says, let your waist be girded, your waist be girded. So I had to look into this, what this really meant. So back in the day, the men, they wore these big, long robes. Right. And so what they did was to gird the robes, they would uh, hike them up in a way where they could have a, 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 a gird, girding around their waist so that it the robe didn't hinder them from taking action from doing work from doing whatever they needed to do so these these men they would they hike their 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 dress their robes up and they would keep them up like that so they're ready to go at any time and and it, so in other words he's saying let your waist be girded he's saying being ready be ready to go be ready to go don't let anything stop you from being ready to go and keep your lamps burning this lamp thing is important I keep hearing about this lamp thing. Keep your lamp burning. And so basically he's saying, I need you to be ready to the point where when I knock on that door, you are ready to open it immediately. You are ready to go. Ready to go. I'm, I'm wrapping this up, I promise. So all I, so when Amanda comes and she, she says, beep the horn, time to go. I can turn off the TV or I can... Uh, uh, stop listening to my music or put down a book if I'm reading a book or whatever I'm doing, I can stop immediately and walk out. Nothing more. I don't have to go and grab nothing. I don't have to put nothing on. I, I have everything. All I have to do is walk out and be ready to go. This is the same thing with Christ's return. This is the same thing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to live my life like I normally do. Okay? Understand. We're not going to be extremists here. We're going to live our lives. The things we do and we have to do, we take care of every day. We're going to live our everyday lives. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to be ready and uh, to go at any moment when I'm doing it. What does that mean? That doesn't mean that I'm just going to be looking up in the sky and walking around and, and, and paranoid whether or not Christ is coming back. No, that's not what it means. See, I want to be ready to, the, to go to the point when Christ returns and I'm doing whatever I'm doing. All I have to do is stop doing it. And go with him. All right. Uh, it, to the point where it, it, when Christ returns, it said that one person would be raised up. Right. So when Christ returns, whatever I'm doing, it won't even matter. I can just be raised up and keep going. OK, 
I want to be able to be ready to that point. So to prove, to, to show you what I mean by this, I'm going to show you the opposite of being ready. Okay? In Christ, I don't want to be, I don't want Christ to return and I don't want to be this guy. This is the guy I don't want to be. I don't want to be the guy when Christ returns and it says you will meet, you will know when Christ is returning. You will see him. There will be no question uh, on this, whether he's returning. When you see Christ returning, I don't want to be that guy. Like, hey, hold up. Hold up, Lord. Hey, what, wait a minute. I need to go make things right with so-and-so. Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I Give me like 10 minutes. I got to make this phone call. I got to talk to so-and-so. I got to make things right. I haven't made things right with this person for years. I totally didn't think about it. Just, I need 10 more minutes, Lord. Please just give me a little bit of a, more time to fix this, to make things right with him or her. Or, uh, or or maybe, maybe hold up, Lord, one second. I need to make a phone call. I got to apologize to somebody. I got to apologize to my boss or apologize to this, this person that was bugging me and I said some things I shouldn't have said. Just give me a couple of minutes, Lord. I just got to do this real quick and make uh, and, and apologize so I can make it right. Uh, can, I, can you do that for me? I don't want to be that guy. Or, or here's, here's, the, here's the, the, the good one here. Here's the big one. Can you come back tomorrow? I need to talk to some people about your return. I need to tell some people about who you are before you return. Can you wait one more day so I can go out and tell some people about who you are so that when you come back tomorrow that they will have the opportunity to come with you? I need one more day, Lord, so I can go and help some more people. I didn't tell enough people. I didn't tell enough people. I don't want to be that guy that when Christ comes back and I start floating in the air, I start thinking about all the people I didn't talk to about Christ. That's part of being ready. Because as soon as you start raising up off that ground, I'm like, oh shoot, I'm not really ready. I didn't talk to, to my cousin. I didn't talk to my my uh, my my brother or my sister. I didn't talk to them. I, I I thought I had more time and I didn't talk to them yet. I kept feeling like I wasn't it wasn't the right time to talk to them to tell them about who you are. And now it's too late. I'm not ready, Lord. And we will feel like we're not ready if we haven't talked to all the people that we know we should have talked to before he came back. We gotta be ready, folks. We live our lives ready. When, we, when God comes back, I want to make sure that I've talked to so many people and I told as many people as I could about Christ to the point where when I go back, go up and start floating, I'm like, well, I did all that I can do. That's all I can do. I will know in my heart, in my spirit, that I talked to as many people as I could. And I won't regret a moment of floating up in the air while I watch other people not because it won't be because I didn't tell them about Christ it'll just be because they chose not to follow and that is what it, it what it means to truly be ready folks to live ready could you honestly sit here today and say if Christ returned today that you felt like you have told and talked to everybody you wanted to talk to about Christ could you I don't know if I could at this point I feel like there's some people that I probably should have already talk to about Christ and I haven't or at least give them an opportunity to know that Christ is is everything they'll ever need to, to, to show them that he is the, the grace and their mercy he is their love that they will ever need and, and 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 maybe I have and maybe I haven't but I feel like there's still people out there that I have an opportunity to talk to that I haven't and so I'm sure that if I feel that way then most people probably feel the same <clears throat> I don't want to be that guy or that girl. I don't want to be not ready. I'm going to still live my life, but I'm going to live it in a ready status. I'm going to constantly be doing everything that I can to make sure my heart is ready, to make sure my light is lit, my lamp is lit, to make sure that my mind is alert and ready to go and make sure the rest of my spirit, my body is, is doing everything it can to make sure that I have the right posture, the right, uh, the, the right uh, perspective, the the right positioning uh, for Christ to come back to take me home. That's where that's what it's all about when it comes to being ready. So here's the question that I have to ask you. After all of this, I have to ask you one last question before I end, and that question is: Are you ready or not? Are you ready or not? Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for your your great and mighty word. We thank you for 
opening our eyes to so many new things that we didn't see uh, before, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to continue to to lead us and guide us, to help us to stay ready, to be ready, to get ready, and, and to make sure that we live our lives in a ready status so that when you are ready to come back to take your, your bride, we, the bride will be ready to go. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Whew. One Hope family. I hope you're feeling it like I'm feeling it. Because I'm telling you, this, this one was a tough one for me, but this is what the Lord gave me. And I'm like, well, I'm going to preach it, even though I'm, I feel like I'm preaching to myself. I'm going to preach it to everyone else as well. <laughs> and so I'll get a double dose because I'm, I'm going to preach it to myself while I'm going over the sermon. And I'm going to preach it to myself while I'm preaching to everybody else as well. So there you go. Uh, my heart is full uh, of everyone. I, I, I hope you are enjoying these sermons that we are bringing to you, that God is bringing to you. We're just a vessel that he's using to, to, to deliver it. I hope that you're getting stuff out of this. Please message us. Let us know um, how how this is for you. If, if you're getting stuff out of this, if this is helping you, please let us know. If there's something that we could do better or if there's some topics you want us to talk about, feel free to let us know. Message us and tell us. Type it in the chat if you're live. I, however you want to do it, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to be able to do what God is calling. We just want to be able to do what God is calling us to do. And that is to give you the word. All right. So we love you, One Hope. And uh, we will be talking to you soon. Have a great day.